let's go right back to the start. Of this, this interview has been completely unchronological, but no. sort of August and a, a period for no, you. Let's skip, let's skip that because I didn't come to November. <laughs> No. I thought in terms of for you personally, this season must sort of feel like. Well, I mean, forget the fact that there's a sort of pandemic, but actually for you personally, August was probably a, I'd imagine a very testing time because you sort of been relegated with Bradford the previous season, yeah. and also sort of were without a club. Talk us, talk me through just that um, that period of uncertainty leading up to the the day before Salford away for Swindon, basically. Yeah, there's no no denying that. I've... I've spoke about it before. It was men- mental. It was extremely tough. I'd went fifteen years without with working every day and being in this this robotic way of be here, do this, do that, day, eat that day, hotel, train, play, etc. So Saturdays were tough. I I tend to find myself on a Saturday trying to get myself out of the house and just trying to switch off and watch games and stuff like that. Because you, you do, you start getting it's mentally tough, and you think. I've, you see stuff it's it's normal, you see stuff come up and you think, Oh, I could do a job there and, and it's horrible. You you wait for an injury, you wait for and it's it's not nice, but that's it's a dog eat dog eat industry and that's what you're all you're waiting for, you're waiting on an injury and, and nothing was coming and I was getting getting uh, told that clubs would be interested but they'd be looking at maybe taking somebody younger and so that started getting a bit frustrating and, and obviously I'm I'm really close with Doyler and kept in contact with him and it just got to I think it was the end of October actually it was the, the home game against Plymouth that I had trained a couple of days leading up to that week and, and I've spoke to the man you know how, how honest the man is I've spoke to him since and he said to be honest when he seen me well what he he had seen of me he thought that I'd, I was finished basically that I didn't have it in me and then I went and trained that week and, and I remember doing a lot of the running and stuff like that and he's like you're the fittest guy here and you've no trained for for so long, but so uh, just to get in and train with boys and stuff like that, and he was honest, I've not got any money, etc. And that first deal I signed, it was actually it was costing me money to come to Swindon. I was still travelling from, I actually moved back to Scotland at the time, so I was doing a lot of travelling and and uh, staying up maybe once twice a week, staying before games. But the manager was first class with me. He was just honest from from day one with me, and I felt good. I felt good with myself and and. Uh, Trained well, felt good, and and the manager lucky enough believed in me. Yeah, I mean, talk that period just before Salford as well. I mean, I remember being, I think I, we were in Manchester, and then on yeah. the day before the game at the hotel, it was sort of like, well, he's here, let's get it done. It was sort of done huge, it sort of turned around from being nothing to then being yeah. very very quickly. Yeah, that's exactly how it was. It was I trained up that a couple of weeks beforehand, and everything was. Still no money, trying to get players out, trying to get players to the conference because at that time they could only move to the conference to free up some money. And and then I, I moved back to, to Scotland. I was staying in Lydon at the time. I thought, well, I'm moving back to Scotland now, going back to my family. The kids get settled back into school. And then just that's football always does it, throws you, throws you an evil twist. And, and my kids started school on the Monday and the gaffer phoned me the Wednesday night saying, can you get to... Uh, the Thursday Thursday afternoon, can you get to Salford Friday morning? We'll get you registered and we'll get you playing. I've, I've got literally hardly any cash, but if you're still wanting to do it, just till January. And we'll, so some, I just knew that even if it wasn't going to be Swindon, listen, I'd have loved it to be in Swindon and, and lucky enough it has worked out for me, but just to get back playing and back in amongst players and in that dressing room training, you put yourself back in the window to to listen. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm there to try and provide for my family. So if it meant that I got something in January that wasn't Swindon because Swindon wasn't available then I'd have already been thankful to the manager in Swindon Yeah I mean just in terms of your, your re-debut I suppose I mean you got two minutes against Salford but I suppose the real homecoming was Mansfield at home just just talk us through that week and the, the home game that came at the end of it Yeah the, the Salford one was uh, was a bit surreal I managed to that was my first time in six, seven months getting back out on a proper football pitch and also the fans in the corner singing your name and stuff like that. It, was, it was a great feeling. It just made me feel good to myself. But that game, I remember coming on and then them getting a penalty within about 30 seconds we'd be on the pitch. So it wasn't a great start. But the the week building up to the Mansfield game was just uh, just normal training week. The manager done the team the Friday and and like rightly so I wasn't in the team at the time because uh, Dion Donahue was 
was was back and was going to be starting left back, and then the manager's phoned me late Friday night about half eight, nine o'clock, and he just like said to me, "I feel as if you've got a similar personality like myself. I think you'd like to know, but just give you the heads up, you're going to be starting tomorrow. You'll be don't worry about it, you'll be fine." Or the rest of it, there's been a problem with Dion's uh, registration, so I'm sitting there Friday night ready, just as normal, just ready to play a game on Saturday, and everything felt just everything felt great again, and. The debut was uh, was brilliant, obviously, and got off to a half decent start. I think I hit the, the crossbar early doors, and I thought oh, if only that went in. But the the most important thing was that, that I felt a lot of pressure coming into that team because they had been doing so well. They just got top of the league after the Salford win, and I just felt a bit of personal pride. Don't let anyone down. Just 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 win and do, and do or right. Don't be at fault or anything like that. And I was hanging the last twenty five minutes. I won't lie. I was. I was struggling to just but I managed to keep going and I think my, my old head managed to, to just uh, get me through it. Yeah, I mean, I remember I must have been about probably four or five minutes into the game, if that was it. The, and I thought if that had gone in, the roof would have literally come off the county ground when it hit the oh, inside of the post. And crossed if that had gone in, I'd have played five minutes and walked down the tunnel. <laughs> Game over. No, I was obviously if that went in, it would have been brilliant. But at least we got the we got the win. Yeah, indeed. I mean, that period is you're coming midway through the probably the best run of form that the club was on all the way through the season, and that period into December was just sort of just felt like momentum was building everywhere. Doyler was on an unbelievable run of form, just putting everything away. We weren't even creating. I, I think I looked at a few stats of that period. And we weren't technically creating more chances than any other team, but the quality of the chance we were creating and then the sort of ruthlessness of our yeah. sort of strike, for, strike force was basically incredible. And we, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. We, the one game, I think it was my second or third game, Grimsby away, first half, or I thought to myself, that's an absolute joy to play in this team. Oh, 2-0 two, two up, 3-0 up maybe, and just everything Doyle seemed to, because I'd seen Doyle the year before, and we struggled to make chances for him, so you never really seen. I knew, I knew his quality, but we never, we never created chances for him. So we all struggled collectively in that Bradford team. So, and when I came, and that was it was a Grimsby game that I thought to myself, he will score an absolute load in this team because we just. And he used to tell me all the time, we create so many chances. It's hard for me not to score a lot of goals. So we just. I just remember that, that, that Grimsby game, I it's an absolute joy to play in this team. We were brilliant in the first half. And, uh, and then Yetzi was... yetsi has got a lot of... Needs to take a lot of credit as well because Yetzi's coming and ended up being pushed to the left-hand side, which isn't natural for him, but he's just slotted in brilliant. He's a good lad. He's got a great character. and It's just a great bunch of lads. I think that we, 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 do, we do deserve what we're, what we're getting. Yeah, I mean, we talk about the attack a lot. We talk about Doyler and Yates, but actually you and the defensive unit that has been moved around a lot over the whole season and has included a lot of dif- different partnerships and personnel has been the building block for not just defensive sort of solidity, but also for building yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. the manager, to be fair, the manager puts a lot of onus on, particularly the two centre-halves and, and Steve, to to start it. So they obviously split, we get on the ball and Steve's got to make a decision where it goes and then obviously myself. At the time, I think we went, five, six games in a row where it was clean sheets and it was we had that solid back five of, of Stephen Bender and myself at right the uh, Frenchie when he was fit Zeki and Hunty and uh, we just seemed to click as a back five we, we, we were constant with each other we had good partnership myself and Frenchie and Robin and uh, Zeki and Steve was a Steve was a great uh, Steve's got a great future ahead of him Steve was brilliant as well and and obviously we've got Grant to sit there in front of us and, and we just knew that if listen, if we have a decent base here, if we look after ourselves here, the front five will will shred teams apart and, and with the help of myself and Rob at, on either side. And we managed to do that. We did two solid most of the time it's been been uh, Frenchie and Zeki, but obviously when Broadbent's come in and, and, and other lads have come in. But and Grant more more often than not sat there, Rosie's sat there and they just protect. It was just they three just protected Brent Bender, and, and they just gave gave us the the freedom to go and play. And the manager likes his fullbacks getting high and wide and getting crosses in the box, getting getting a lot of interchanging movements. And 
And I just think at times teams couldn't cope with, and that's me being honest. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think that was the, the majority of the games that we played against. I think that was the overriding theme was that we went in with the attitude that the way we played was our greatest at- asset. It wasn't this, an individual or an asset. Yeah, you're right. That overall combination of all the all the yeah. basically. So it wasn't down to, yeah, you're, you're spot on. It wasn't down to like personnel, it was down to like the system and every player that played in that team knew the, knew the system. So regardless of whether it was Tyler up front or Yates who left or Kane playing on the right or Rosie sitting or Broadbent or whatever it may be, every day knew their, their job in that system. I think that's a lot of man, uh, credit to the management for that, the Gaffer and, and uh, Tommy and, and Hunty as well. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the three sort of coaches and the, the, the gaffer. But how how would you say is it's been in terms of the support staff this season? Obviously, I, I'm sort of half part of that. I see a lot of the work they do. But how have you found sort of the support you found from the physios, the sports science analysis, and also, I mean, the kitmen in terms of the emotional support as well? Yeah. To be fair, they've disappointed me. They've been bang average. <laughs> no, listen, I, I was going to come on to that later on that. When you when you win when you win titles and you're successful at clubs, it's it's very easy to look at the eleven players on the pitch and, and the manager. It's that's who everybody looks at. But there's a lot of hard work that goes in behind the scenes for those for that manager and those eleven players to perform at the best of their ability. We've got physios that work tirelessly. We've got media yourself and see how hard you work. We've got John that works extremely hard. We've got the two kit men. We've got a. Uh, Webby who comes in on a match day. You've got match day staff. You've got staff that are there every day. Matty Vernon's working hard. The, the, the groundsman, the pitch is immaculate. You've got Jill upstairs. Listen, you, you could go on all day, but it is genuinely a team thing. I know that's people think that's easy to say, but it's easy for all the players to take the credit. But I think that a lot of people behind the scenes do deserve the credit and don't get what, what they get. In most industries, that happens in most industries. There's, a, there's probably harder work going on behind the scenes and what you the what the the fans actually see on, on a match day. So I think it's it's credit to everyone and it's listen it's Swindon Town that won it. Wasn't it just Swindon players that won it we, we won it as a whole. Definitely I mean you, you mentioned Webby Day. I think uh, I heard that he's the first misuse to in a two league he's, <laughs> he's read the text we've read a couple of text messages about it so so we're uh, we're in joint joint history mate. Indeed, indeed well that's what we'll end on that, a history maker. And congratulations, it's been a pleasure to watch you since November. And I can't wait to get back and doing it in League One, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Listen, let's uh, let's be positive. Let's everybody stay safe, stay healthy. And when we do get back, then then sod all this. Let's get to 40 points and see where we go. Let's, let's get to 65 and see where we go.